Hello, John. Uh, you're the chaplain at Manchester United, but can you tell us how it all began for you? Uh, sports chaplaincy started for me way back in 1977. I was then uh, a student assistant pastor at the church where I became assistant minister and then lead minister in Watford. And truly God opened an opportunity for chaplaincy at the local football club. So my first experiences of sports chaplaincy were at Watford Football Club way back in the glory days of Elton John and Graham Taylor, 1977 onwards. And uh, that was a role that I got involved in then and stayed in for 14 or 15 years. So that was an interesting first experience in chaplaincy. I believe you're the founder member of an organisation uh, currently known as Sports Chaplaincy UK, formerly known as SCORE. What led you to start this? Yes, yeah, SCORE was an idea that developed in 1990 and as a registered charity was fully certified by the Charity Commissioners in 1991. It's a bit of a long story, David, so I'll try and be brief. Uh, I'd been involved in ministry and sports chaplaincy at St. James Road Baptist Church in Watford. My church actually gave me a day and a half a week to be involved in the local football club, and not simply when I was assistant minister, but when I was lead minister. They felt it was really important for their minister to be involved in something beyond the immediate life of the church. So that began and was developing. And my wife and I felt that God had something more for us. It was just funny, the church was going well, we were seeing people come to faith, it was growing, it was a very positive time, but we just had a sense that God had something more. And we wondered whether the possibility of becoming pastor at a West London church was an answer to that. Uh, because out of the blue, I was told there was a vacancy and the deacons were interested in ascertaining whether I could fill that vacancy. But when I talked to what was then my area superintendent, Roy Freestone, he pointed to my experience in sports chaplaincy and asked, would it be good stewardship if I were to leave all that behind to concentrate on the pastorate at this big church. And he said, I think God has given you that experience uh, for a good reason. And he said, if you're willing to leave your church in Watford, I think you should try and develop and pioneer chaplaincy in the sports world. So it was out of that conversation that Roy talked with David Coffey, who was then head of mission. And David and I talked and other senior dignitaries at Didcot talked. And in the end, they said, look, can you try and set up and organize uh, a ministry that would develop chaplaincy in the sports world? And, and if it flies and God blesses it and it goes forward, that's great. And if it doesn't, we'll find you another church. And uh, six months later, we decided that God was blessing it and it was going forward. And uh, that's where SCORE started. And uh, we have recently changed our name to Sports Chaplaincy UK and now we would look at maybe 225 church leaders, clergy who are serving their local sports club as a chaplain, giving a day, day and a half a week to the spiritual and pastoral needs of those associated with the club. You mentioned that you had some support um, at the start from Didcot. Has there been ongoing support from the Baptist family? Yes, I need to say that the Baptist family has been hugely supportive of this initiative uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, for the first six months, they said, we will fund it. How much do you need? And I had no idea how much we'd need. I went to Youth for Christ and said, what's it cost to fund a worker for a year? And they said, oh, it's about 25K a year. So I reported that back to Didcot and they said, right, we'll give you 12 and a half K for six months. And we didn't use it all, which was quite fortunate. We had a little bit left in the kitty. It was a bit like the widow's cruise, you know. Uh, we, we never had a lot, but there was always sufficient for the immediate. And in those early days, uh, we had funding from a special fund and then Home Mission gave us a, a regular grant as the whole thing continued. 
and, and I think in the early days, Home Mission said, look, we'll give you 8,000 if your budget is 25. Uh, can you find the rest? And I said, I can't find the rest, but maybe God will find the rest for us. And God did, and we were provided for amazingly through individuals, through churches, uh, through some supportive trusts. And, and score continued. And I look back over 20 years of commitment, largely from home mission, and say thank you for what you've done because they are responsible for there now being 220 church leaders working as chaplains in the sports world. They're responsible for funding and enabling this vision uh, to come about. So thank you, Baptist family. What led you to change the name to Sports Chaplaincy UK? Yes, we have recently had a name change. Originally, SCORE was called SCORE because it was uh, an abbreviation of Sports Chaplaincy Offering Resources and Encouragement. And that's how we set it up with the charity commissioners. And people said to us, that's a pretty long-winded title. It doesn't have snappiness and go. Uh, so instead of being called Sports Chaplaincy Offering Resources and Encouragement, uh, we were called SCORE, which was a better, sharper title. Uh, but we have talked, as SCORE got established and known, we've talked about the possibility of changing the title. Because people say, SCORE? What's SCORE about? And we felt if we had a different title, something that does what it says on the tin, that would be better. Hence, Sports Chaplaincy UK. But it, 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 it's been a bit of a challenge because there's lots of stories, marathon, snickers and all of that. You can change a title and people forget what it was. They remember the old, but they can't relate it to the new. But we just hope and pray and trust that the change of title will be helpful. And if we tell people we were SCORE, but now we're Sports Chapmancy UK, they'll help and understand. So yeah, change of title, because it does what it says on the tin. When I was at the SCORE conference last year, I met a gentleman who referred to his rugby club as his church, and the fact he was the pastor of three teams of rugby squad and a congregation of about 3,000 fans. Uh, that personally was really exciting to me, a great ministry that that gentleman has. What's the most exciting thing for you in Sports Chaplaincy UK? I, I think the opportunities that excite me primarily are that through Sports Chaplaincy, we see trained, committed Christian leaders working outside of their churches, getting involved in the wider world. And I've said many times, I think this is really important because we live in a culture, in a society where people do not normally and naturally flock to church. They may have done that 50 or 60 years ago, but not, it seems, in the 21st century. And I think church has to re-engage with society and culture by invading it, by being where it is. And sports chaplaincy means that there are people around this country who are leaving their church base and are spending regularly, say a day a week, involved with the people at a local sports club. And that may not be the whole of one day. It might be a morning one day, an afternoon another day, an afternoon or an evening another day. But as you do that week on week, month on month, year on year, you build up relationships with people, you build trust with people that enables you to minister to their spiritual and pastoral needs. And I find here at Old Trafford, working with Manchester United, that people have got to know me, trust me, and they do open up to me with all sorts of things. It's a wonderful, marvellous opportunity for me to bring a spiritual perspective into life, for me to meet some of the religious needs. People need perhaps a funeral or a wedding, something like that. Uh, people talk at a personal level, issues that just happen in life, the crises of life that people know they can trust me, they talk to me about. I'm sort of pastoring a secular congregation. It's a wonderful opportunity. A person that's been in the news recently is Fabrice Roamba. Uh, what role would a, a, a chaplain have in a situation like that? 
when we talk about the opportunity recently over the tragic heart attack that uh, befell Fabrice Muamba, that, that says so much to me uh, about chaplaincy. Uh, for instance, there is an absolute and real need. Now, fortunately, Bolton Wanderers have a very involved and committed chaplain, and I know Phil Mason. And when that happened, uh, I texted Phil and said, just heard of the situation that happened down at White Hart Lane with Fabrice Muamba. Uh, I will be praying for you and all involved in this situation. And Phil texted me back and said, thank you. Please keep praying. Please, please keep praying. And, and I've been in touch with Phil uh, over the days immediately after. And he's been involved. He went down to London. He saw the family. He's been ministering to the club and the people. He's been back in Bolton talking to the staff and supporters at the Reebok. He started a little prayer service at the Reebok that enabled people and supporters from around the town to come to a focal point and to pray for Fabrice. And his involvement has been very, very positive indeed. And I think when a real tragedy happens, and it does very occasionally, then sometimes to have a chaplain whose experience and training and know-how helps with the crisis that comes, that is invaluable. I can think, for instance, of a tragedy at Featherstone Rovers where two of their players were involved in a car crash. One was killed, one was seriously injured. And afterwards, the staff at that rugby league club and the staff of the Rugby League Benevolent Association play, paid huge tribute to Vic, the Featherstone Rovers chaplain, because he was able to meet the needs of many people, the families of those involved in the crash, but also the staff who were devastated by what had happened. So a chaplain at times of crisis is invaluable. But not only that, other times as well. I think the Fabrice Muamba scenario really opened up the whole possibility of praying. Pray for Fabrice, they said, didn't they? And many people have got involved in praying for Fabrice Muamba, and it's opened up lots of conversations about the significance of prayer, of God. Does God answer prayer? Does God respond to our prayers? No end of conversations have taken place because of that. John, how can people get involved in Sports Chaplaincy UK? How can we get involved with Sports Chaplaincy UK? Well, there's two or three ways, perhaps. Uh, first of all, information. And I guess the obvious place for information is our website. And I understand that's going up on the screen, even as I speak. www.sportschaplaincy.org.uk And there are addresses and phone numbers that you can uh, develop and contact with. So do that. It'd be great if people could inquire about how they can pray for us. We have a monthly news and prayer letter that goes out by email. We can put you on the list for that. Uh, we have people who donate. We have churches who donate to the ministry. And if you can do that, that is really helpful because it's tough financially out there and we struggle. But also, maybe you can be involved with us. Maybe there is the possibility of becoming a chaplain in your club. And it doesn't have to be a Manchester United like this. Uh, it might be your local sports club, a football club, a rugby club, a, a hockey club, a chaplaincy to a sports centre perhaps, chaplaincy to a bowls club. Uh, the, the, the possibilities are endless. But we would try to help you and give you some guidelines. We can show you the parameters we have training for potential chaplains. So there's a lot we can do to equip you if you're considering that God is leading you to be a chaplain in your town to one of the sports institutions that are near to you too. What training is available for those that are interested in being involved? What training is available? Well, we, we do have now uh, a plan to do some preparatory training for those who are involved in chaplaincy. Most of our chaplains to this point have been clergy, 
who have been trained pastorally as part of their course that has prepared them for ministry. They have experience pastorally through their work as ministers in local churches. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel for that, but we do need to try and help them understand what chaplaincy work in sport is like. And we've put on day conferences for training. We're planning to put on a slightly longer training conference for potential chaplains. But as part of the ongoing training, we do have our annual conference where we bring chaplains together from all sports from throughout the UK. And that takes place over two or three days. And through that, and through the interaction and networking, that is a great informal training opportunity. And also regionally, twice a year, we have chaplains in local areas gathering together. So I'm in the northwest of England. About three or four months ago, we gathered at Burnley Football Club. And in a little while, we'll gather somewhere, either Liverpool or Manchester. And the chaplains of the northwest, like other regions, meet regionally twice a year. And that is not only a networking, a fellowshipping, a, an exchange of information, but we also try and get some training into those meetings. So it's ongoing, it's professional development really as chaplaincy. And we think that's important. Also, we would point to the course that we are involved in at the University of Gloucestershire. They have a certificate or a diploma or a degree course in sports chaplaincy. And I'm actually involved in teaching some of that course. And, and that I think is a wonderful opportunity. It's the first UK university that has got a certified, authenticated course in accredited course in sports chaplaincy. And, and, and I think that's a great thing. And we are hoping to encourage more and more people, not just to do sports chaplaincy, but to have a certificate or a diploma or a degree in sports chaplaincy. Your website mentions that you're going to have an interesting role in the 2012 Games. Can you tell us what that is and what your expectations and hopes are for the role? Uh, yes, David, I'm happy to talk about 2012. Uh, my role in 2012 will be as the head of the Athletes Village Multi-Faith Service. That's what they call chaplaincy. Uh, and I've also had a role in helping to train those who will serve as chaplains at the Games uh, this coming summer. Uh, training involves three things really. All chaplains have had to apply as volunteers and each chaplain has therefore to go through the general volunteer training. And then there is what we call venue specific training. So if you're working in the athlete's village, you need to understand the ethos, the parameters of work in the athlete's village. And the area that I've been particularly involved in is the role specific training. What is it that chaplains do? How do they work? What does chaplaincy look like at a major games event? And I've been brought in on this because over the years, because this has been a niche ministry. I've had a bit of experience going back to 1990 in the Commonwealth Games in New Zealand, 94 Commonwealth Games in Auckland, in, uh, sorry, we'll start that again. Because this is a niche ministry, uh, I've been brought in because I've had some experience in major games chaplaincy. It started in 1990 in Auckland, New Zealand. I was asked again to be chaplain at the Commonwealth Games when it was four years later in Victoria, Canada. I headed up and organized the chaplaincy team in 2002 here in Manchester and then got involved in the Olympics and Paralympics in Athens in 2004 and a couple of years ago was at the Winter Olympics in Vancouver. So those involved in the London Organising Committee asked if I could help and support them uh, in London 2012. So I've been seconded for three months from the 1st of July through to more or less the end of September uh, to serve the chaplaincy work, the multi-faith team 
for London 2012. So I'll be there and be very involved. Thank you very much for your time here, John. Thank you for the invitation to come up to spend some time with you at Manchester United. I pray that God will bless you and your ministry in the 2012 Games and hope to see you again soon. God bless.